welcome to Circuit Analysis for Analog Designers. My name is Shanti Pawan and I am a Professor of Electrical Engineering at the Indian Institute of Technology in Madras. Why is this course relevant? Well, to motivate the need for a course like this, we do not need to look further than our pockets and reach for our phones. A cell phone today comes equipped with a variety of sensors. For example, the phone you have in your pocket has accelerometers, gyroscopes, light sensors, touch sensors and of course, RF transceivers. What does the signal processing behind each one of these sensors have in common? It turns out that a modern signal chain looks basically like this. A variety of sensors, audio, touch, inertial and RF are needed to interface the real world to the virtual world. Real world signals, as you all know, are continuous in time and amplitude, while the digital world knows only signals that are discrete in time and amplitude. So, we need circuitry to interface between the real world and the virtual world. And how does that interface circuitry look like? You need amplifiers to take small signals and make them larger. You need filters to be able to remove interference and noise. And you need analog to digital converters that convert the filtered signal into digital form. On the actuator front, the discrete time and amplitude signal that is produced by the DSP has to be converted into a signal that is continuous in time and amplitude. And that is done by going in reverse, namely a digital to analog converter, a smoothing filter and driver amplifiers. The job of an analog circuit or IC designer is to basically design these blocks and engineer these systems in as efficient a manner as possible. To show you an example of the role of filters played in signal chains, here is a typical example of an RF signal chain. The desired signal is extremely small as shown in this picture, but that by itself is not a problem. The signal is unfortunately also accompanied by a whole lot of interferers which are much larger than the desired signal itself. And the role of the analog designer is to be able to take this really dirty spectrum out here and only digitize that part of the spectrum that is relevant. The aim of this course therefore, is to give the student or the designer the mathematical tools needed to analyze and design analog circuits and systems. It is predicated on the fact that knowledge without context is useless. So, what we would like to build here is on concepts that you have probably already seen in parts in your earlier classes. But in this course, they will be placed in context and you will know why it is important for you to know these things. Who should take this course? This is intended for analog, mixed signal and RF engineers. And the topics that will be covered are the following. We will first have a quick refresher of time invariant electrical networks. We will talk about reciprocity and inter reciprocity in such networks, which are extremely important properties in practice. We will then make something useful with these network elements, namely analog electronic filters. We will then discuss the important issue of noise in linear time invariant circuits and networks. A good understanding of noise is important because noise limits the smallest signal that can be discerned in an electronic system. We will then segue into distributed networks and transmission lines. So far in the course, you would have only looked at circuits and systems that are linear and time invariant. As you already are aware, nothing in the world is truly linear. At best, circuits that claim to be linear are what are called weakly nonlinear circuits, where nonlinear effects are very small in comparison to linear ones. We will spend the last part of the course talking about weak nonlinearities in circuits and systems and look at ways of analyzing these nonlinearities. So, welcome to this course. I hope you will have as much fun in this course as I did when I was recording this material. Thank you.